uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, errors free programming. So I feel pretty confident in saying that we've all done it. Done what you ask. I'm glad you asked. I'll, I'm going to tell you. We've all written code that prints out things like this. Does anyone claim that they've never written code that prints out things like this? Or maybe things like this? Well, we do it because it's good enough. We do it because everyone actually, you know, we, everyone understands what it means. But is it really good enough? Ask yourself. Or is it bad English? And bad English leads to text speak. And text speak leads to the downfall of civilization as we know it. <laughs> oh, that worked really well on that projector. So I've been reading a book about um, improving your presentation techniques. And uh, one of the points it makes is that you should offer, you, you should show early in the talk what the pain points are that you're uh, addressing. I may have overstepped the mark a little. But anyway, good enough just isn't good enough. Why do we do it? We do it because we're lazy, and the bad kind of lazy. I mean, it's not as though it's difficult to write the code that does it right. Or maybe something like this. You know, there are many ways of doing it, but it's just incredibly tedious to do it every time you need to output a, a, a text message like this. But I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, there is a solution. It's called lingua en inflection. Oh, and sorry for the people for whom en isn't your first language. And it's Damien Ware. which means several things to different people. Uh, but what it does is it inflects words for you. It will inflect nouns. Nouns, for those of you that don't know grammar, it are things. It will inflect verbs, which are actions, or as my old English teacher used to say, doing words. And it will inflect adjectives, which are descriptions. Uh, it's very simple to use. Um, it has these helper functions that create objects. So you call noun, pass it the, the, the text that you want to, in, to inflect, catch that object in a variable, and then you can call singular or plural, and you get either error or errors. Very simple. Similarly with um, verbs, pass it the verb was, and it will make the difference between was and were. And again, for adjectives, um, it understands that our is a plural, and it will give you the singular, which is my. Nice and easy. So it knows grammar, so you don't have to, although it probably helps. Um, it knows things like in the like the correct indefinite article to use for a um, particular noun, and it knows that um, although they both start with a letter U, uncle needs an, and union needs a, and because even though they both start with H, then house needs a, a, and ours needs an, an hour. So it's very clever, which as you would expect, because it's Damien Ware. Um, it has a wonderful thing in there called as regex. So you can match a text against a noun as a regex to find out whether that text contains that noun in any of its forms. Uh, in fact, uh, if you use it in a regex form, um, you don't actually need to call um, as regex explicitly. Uh, the reason why I use cow as the example is because it's one of many um, words in there that understands Old English as, as well. Um, kine is an Old English word for meaning that means cattle. 
Um, so there you go, you've actually learned something interesting from, fr from the talk. <laughs> Ask Damien. <laughs> so, does this help us? How much does this help us? Uh, well, no, actually it r doesn't help us very much. Because we still have to write code like this. I mean, it's all hidden away nicely now, but perhaps we can do something a bit cleverer like this, but it's still the same code. It's not really any simpler. So am I wasting your time? Well, this is Damien Ware. So actually, hidden inside it, in, hidden inside the module is, a, is another far easier interface, which is the one that you're going to love. And it's a single function called inflect. And you pass inflect a string that looks like this. Uh, and in fact, for most of the examples that I'll show you over the next 20 minutes or so, let's picture this loop ar ar around the call to inflect. And it prints out this. It prints out zero errors, one error, two errors. And it also conjugates the, um, the verb were and was. So let's have a little bit of a closer look and see how it actually does that. So obviously this is the string that you pass in and there are these tags in the string. And this is where the magic happens tags um, a letter or a, a symbol that explains, that basically uh, tells you what the tag is, or tells the module what the tag is, and then some data that you pass in. Um, so there's a tag that has the hash sign, and hash is kind of means count, so that's where you put a variable that contains the number that you're of things that you're dealing with. Um, N is where you put a noun. V is where you put a verb. Uh, it's not in any of the examples because it's really hard to find a good example. Um, but you can also do it for adjectives. So there you go. Um, put that, that string into inflect and it prints out Zero errors were found, one error was found, etc. Job done. Easy. Let's go to the pub. No. But. Have you ever had one of those product owners who, as soon as you fix a problem, they, find they, they use it as an excuse to, to introduce more problems for you to fix. It's like they don't want you to go to the pub. Here is our, project, our product owner. Um, those of you in the know will notice that I've deliberately chosen a person who is neither male nor female. So we don't want to get into those sexist assumptions, do we? So anyway, so having, having demonstrated the way that it work, the, the, the system now works to you, she comes back to you and says, um, you know, should it say zero errors or should it say no errors? And you're thinking, oh, yeah, okay. That's actually not a bad idea. But this is Damien Ware. <laughs> so let's read the, the documentation. And it turns out that the, doc that the syntax for these tags doesn't actually look like this. It looks like this. And there are slots where you can put parameters in. And if you put the parameter n, it tells it to use the word no instead of zero. So you just add that one letter, and suddenly it now says no errors were, were found. So you show that to the product owner. Can we go to the pub? Well. Sometimes, does it mean, is, it, is it best to say no errors or no error? Well, I, to be honest, I don't really care. 
Um, but there's an S that you can pass, and then it will say um, no error, as opposed to no errors. So whatever the product owner of the week wants, you can just change that character, and you can get whatever they want. Still can't go to the pub. Well, if it can say no errors, wouldn't it be nice if it says an error? Okay, A, A for an. And that just works. I know what you're gonna say. In introducing the A for an, we've lost the N for no. But you can stack these things. So you can put both of them in at the same time and you get no errors an error. Of course, you can stack the um, S in as well, and, and it would give you that. We're doing pretty well so far, I think. What have you got for us now? Words or numbers? Well, actually, she has a point here. Um, if you read any good English style guide, in written English, for, num for smallish numbers, say numbers under 10 or under 20, it's good style to actually write out the numbers as words and only skip to numerals later on. So there's a W, and that gives you this. Then it gives you the word, and, and I think once it gets to 10, 11, it then switches to, um, to using numerals. Can we please go to the pub now? One last thing, our users can't count, to which I thought, what? But there's only one response to that. <laughs> uh, so I tried it, it turns out it stands for fuzzy and it just works. <laughs> uh, although I should point out that I changed the loop slightly because the numbers it, it needs a, a different set of numbers. So anyway, Damien Ware, you know it makes sense. You know it allows you to get your job done faster and better and allows you to spend more time in the pub. Inflect is the only subroutine in the, in the module that you need to get most of, of your day-to-day -day work done. It allows you to be lazy, but in a good way. Because we know that good enough isn't actually good enough, so we can be better. Avoid the apocalypse at the end of, of, the, of the world. Keep the evil product owner happy. And spend more time in the pub. I've gone really quickly, because that's all. Thank you very much. So I think I've got uh, 10 to 15 minutes if anyone's got any questions, but it's so simple, I can't imagine there are any. Guinevere. You saw it was Damien Ware, right? Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's got, the, 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 the whole thing is driven from two huge text files. Um, and so, I, I mean, Damien has worked very hard to cover as many, I mean, if, if, if it's got kind in, in there. Um, but if you do find something, some use case that it doesn't work for, then you can just edit these text files and recompile the module and it all, yeah, anybody else say? So the question is, can you have two sets of inflection in the same place, in the same string? Um, well, uh, option one, of course, would be to split it into two strings, do the generation, and then 
concatenate them. Um, there is a th th there's an another tag that you can use, um, which basically means set the number, but don't use it. Don't print it out at this point. So I, I think you can probably change the value of the number halfway through the processing of the string. But to be completely honest, I haven't tried that. Good question, though. Anyone else? Hey. What about in other languages? You saw the en in the name, right? Um, this is open source. Patch is welcome. <laughs> I, the, the, as, I, as I said in the, in the answer to, the, to, the, to the, uh, another question, there is these two text files that, dr that drive it. I don't know to what extent that is flexible enough for the way that other languages form plurals. I, I, I just don't know. I'd be astonished, knowing Damien, if it didn't work for at least the Romance and many of the European languages. Um, I think you might, you might have problems with Arabic or, or something like that, perhaps. But you could try it. I don't know is the, is the real answer. Over there. So for, that, for those of you who didn't hear, I think, I think I'm summarizing correctly if I say this isn't make text. <laughs> and make text can do a lot more. Yeah, yeah. At the back there. Have I that? Yeah, yeah, I, I know the article. It's the one that I stole from to write this talk. Yes. So if you read the documentation from Inflex, th this is how I discovered inflection. If you read the documentation for Inflex, it says. Um, this module is largely deprecated and you should go and look at inflection instead. You, 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 made, me think, you, you made me think I put a typo in the most important slide in the talk. Um, yes, yeah, so I actually, I mean, you, that, that, that's a good point though. You, you would have seen, um, you may well have seen lingua en in, 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 in flect, which is just spelt with a CT at the end rather than the XION. Um, and that has been a, that's a module that's been around on CPAN for a, a long time, and you may well have used it in your code. Uh, inflection is a pretty much a rewrite of that um, with a different interface and more features, so you really should be using this on new code. Oh, well, see, I must have read the, the five <laughs> synopsis in order to find it. I'm like that. Any other questions? Yes. I uh, I haven't measured it. It's the honest answer. But I mean, you're building a string. This is doing a little bit of um, regular expressions and bit of processing. I, there will be a performance hit. I have no idea how bad it is or how much of a problem that would be in my application. Anything else? Oh, the one over here. No, because that's bad and wrong. <laughs> Is that a question, Todd? No. no one else? In that case, oh, I'm still 10 minutes early, which is a bit embarrassing, but never mind. Sorry? Yes. Um, well, thank you very much for listening. Um,
go and grab a coffee or have a tea a break or something. Thank you.